Hi and welcome. Today's video is going to be on the Ruger 1022. There are more of these rifles in American hands, I think, than any other rifle. I think this rifle is responsible for the most amount of of uh, rounds ever fired uh, for that reason. I feel confident in saying that this is probably the most shot rifle in America. There are so many of these sold that uh, the aftermarket um, community, the companies that make things to put on this gun, I've seen them where I would I would never even know it was a Ruger 1022 or even a 22 for that matter. They have kits where you take uh, the, the stock off these things and put it all together where it looks like an AR. Uh, it's insanity. The different types of things you can put on the end of the barrel. Uh, the possibilities with these things are endless. Uh, I have this. This is a standard model. This is a 1982. Um, I'm sorry. This is the um, the uh, Deluxe Sporter, the, the, the custom one. Uh, what really makes these things between the grades is really just the stock, the... Basically, you just take the, the, the whole receiver and barrel assembly off, and you can drop it into, you know, into a, a standard. Um, this Deluxe Sporter stuff will drop right into a standard and be the same thing. It's really just stock options. The Deluxe Sporter has, uh, in, in 1982, had uh, checkering here on the stock, and it has these uh, sling swivels. There's some more checkering here and the sling swivel on the back. And the butt plate, uh, they're, they're different between the standard and the Deluxe Sporter. This is what the butt plate would look like. Um, this is the standard here. The wood is a little bit more plain. Uh, it has a barrel band. Uh, it has a um, it has a, a different buttstock, as you can see. It's shaped a little bit differently, a little bit more square on the top. Um, but just the same exact size, and uh, like I said, internally they're exactly the same. Uh, I have scopes on both of these. I go through my phases. I go through a season without any scopes on any of my rifles and then I'll go through a season where I, where I throw them on. Uh, this season I was just kind of into uh, playing sniper and uh, being able to uh, look down a scope when I'm looking down range. Uh, these things handle a scope well. They have a nice uh, you know mount that they could, that they sell that uh, screws into these um, set screws that you take out of the top and this uh, rail slides on that you uh, could just slide scopes on. And uh, they both have this nice uh, this tip up sight that uh, this is known for the Ruger 1022. It's a beautiful sight. Uh, the sight options for these things are also, if you wanted to keep yours basically stock, but just get a different sight. They have like thousands of different sights you can put on these. I was always happy with the originals. Um, well, since these things are both basically stock, there really isn't much to say about the, the Ruger 1022. Uh, just a couple of things that make them unique. Uh, one is cool, and uh, one is absolutely annoying. Uh, the cool part of these is this 10-round uh, uh, box magazine that fits flush. It's a rotary box magazine. The rounds fit around it as you load them in. They go in a circle. And uh, for 10 rounds to fit flush inside this stock, I, I've never seen it under 22. They always have some bit of magazine sticking out of the bottom. But to, the fact that this one fits flush like that uh, makes it really nice. It's a very, very neat package. I always like the magazines on these. And... Uh, and it's very easy just the size of them and how the rounds are contained to just have a bunch of these in your pocket. Uh, and they do sell, they sell a 25-round uh, magazine. They were, they were kind of junky uh, when aftermarket companies made them, but now that Ruger makes their own, it's called, I think, the BX-22 or BX-25. I think it's BX-25 because it holds 25 rounds. And it's, uh, unfortunately, I'm not allowed to have them in the state that I live in. But... Uh, they are, I hear that they're quality pieces, the ones that Ruger make now, and, uh, and they, but they essentially, uh, they fit in the same way and look like this on the top, uh, except just not being rotary, and it would just be a straight magazine, um, that holds 25 rounds. Uh, that's the, the cool part of this rifle, for me, was always the magazine, how it fit flush in there like that, and the annoying, uh, part of this rifle was always, uh, had to do with, um, locking the bolt open. Uh, as you can see, the bolt, whether the gun is loaded or not, there's, it's just a free-flowing bolt. There's nothing that stops it. There's nothing that automatically locks it open. Even when it's loaded, if you uh, shoot your last round, the bolt is not going to remain open. It's going to remain closed. The bolt just basically operates just like this, no matter what. And uh, in order to be able to lock the bolt open, to keep it open, um, there is a button here on the bottom of the trigger guard 
Uh, I call it a button, but it's not even really like a button. It's not like if you press it, it locks the bolt open, and you press it again, and the bolt comes forward, or even if you hold the bolt and you press it again, the bolt comes forward. It's more like a rocker switch. It's, it's hard to explain its operation even. It's kind of like when you press it in, it kind of rocks back like that, and when you pr move it again, it's like kind of like you have to push it and slide it, where it rocks back and forth like this to, to be able to lock and then unlock the bolt. And uh, it's always a source of frustration. And um, I've seen so many people struggling with that. And, uh, you know, and I thought it was just me or we're all just inept. But what's funny is I saw uh, Hickok45, uh, the YouTube sensation who does uh, uh, gun videos of him shooting on his uh, land in Tennessee. Uh, I love his videos. And uh, even he struggled. When he started struggling with this thing and it was like, John, I can't seem to, yeah, what do I do, John, well, help me out, you know. It uh, it was it really made me laugh because of just all the years I've had these things since the, they're both early eighties. I think this is an eighty. Uh, the deluxe is an eighty four, and the standard is uh, an eighty two. And uh, I've just been uh, struggling with that since I'm a little kid. And uh, I, there's one modification I've been able to make in uh, the later years on these on both of them I've done. Um, this 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 metal that you see sticking out here is actually part of a plate. That when you dismantle the rifle, this plate, you take off a couple of pieces, and you, when you take this piece off, it's actually a plate that has uh, eccentric an eccentric lobe in it, where you can see how it uses this operation of kind of rocking back and forth. And there's videos and in information online that detail exactly what metal to cut away, and exactly what the parts should look like when you're done. Uh, where you could make a modification to this plate to make things a little bit easier. You could also buy the plates with the modification already done. If you're not handy and you just want to take the plate that's in there and toss it and put the other one in, you're good. But all it, it, the, it, you could actually make the same part that you would buy just by using the stock plate. It doesn't add anything. It's like you're just taking a little bit of metal away from a strategic area to, uh, you know, to, 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 to get it to operate like this where uh, you still have to press it in to lock the bolt open. But that really wasn't the hard part. Locking it open, you'd see people lock it open pretty easy because you're, all you're basically doing is, is, is pressing down and pulling the bolt back, and then you're hoping when you let go of the bolt it's going to stay. And it, usually just by pressure on this switch, uh, I call it a switch, not button, switch, lever, you don't even know what to call this thing. Um, but it, you would be able to get it locked open pretty easy. Um, but the hard part about it was when you would try, you would press it again and go to unlock the bolt, but pressing it wouldn't do anything. And you're sitting there now at the range, loaded. So now it's like, you know, you, when the bolt slaps closed, you want to be like, oh, it's loaded. You know, you, you need to really be able to just close a bolt, uh, you know, carefully and under control when the gun is loaded. Once that bolt closes, it's action time. You know what I mean? But with this thing, that that... That point right there, that, that, that point where you're going to have the gun loaded in a second, was always a little weird because it was you'd struggle with this thing to get it to switch to its other position to allow the bolt to come forward. With the modification, um, with the bolt locked open, all you would do, you wouldn't have to touch the switch at all. You would just pull the bolt back and let go, and it would automatically release. Now, if you could come up with something that on the last round would lock this bolt open, um, and you'd be able to just remove the old magazine, replace with the fresh magazine, and just load that way it would be great. Uh, the chances of them coming up with some type of mechanism to lock this bolt open, if it exists, please uh, leave that in the comment section. I've never heard of it, but somebody needs to come up with something, some type of modification to lock this gun open, uh, to lock the bolt open on the last shot, please. Um, but this this modification, I should just to do it. It's it's pretty easy if you got a Dremel motor tool and uh, you know you're handy enough to take a gun completely apart and put it back together again, like a gun like this. You should be able to handle it. You're really just taking off a little bit of material. And if you make a mistake and you screw it up and somehow it doesn't work at all, you or you, you screwed it up, you could just order the one the the automatic bolt release for this, and then you know you you wouldn't have to buy a new part. You just have to get the one that, uh, you know, you'd have to pay for to get this done instead of being able to do it by yourself. But uh, but I suggest doing it. And uh, that's it. Uh, this one has some old kind of Tasco scope. I'm not even sure really where I acquired that one from. Uh, this one has a uh, Bushnell Sport View. It's kind of like overkill for this rifle because it's like a nine-power scope. 
But uh, I always uh, found it really cool to be able to, you know, plink at long distance. So, you know, you're still plinking with a 22, but, uh, you know, at least you'd be able to uh, plink at stuff real far away, you know, like laying prone in the grass and, uh, you know, having to uh, <coughs> have fun sighting in these scopes. You know, with a 22, the difference between 50 yards and 100 yards, uh, you know, scope-wise is, uh, is, is uh, you know, it's a lot. It's not a high-powered rifle. If you, you one cl half a click and you'd, you know, of, of elevation, and you'd be right there, back on target. But with these twenty twos, it's actually fun to sight them in at fifty yards, and then sight them in again at a hundred yards, and uh, you know, and see how much uh, how much bullet drop there is between that fifty yard, that second fifty yard um, gap when you're uh, when you're sighting them in. You know. But anyway. Those are the Ruger 1022s, and uh, if you don't have one, which uh, you probably have one somewhere, go look in the closet. There's probably one in there that you don't even know about. If you don't have one of these, I suggest you go uh, get, get every every house, especially a house with kids that are growing up to around shooting age, uh, should have one of these. Uh, it's a, definitely a perfect starter gun. And um, that's it. Have a nice day.